Hi guys, um, this is Mina, where uh, this exam you guys have uh, anti-neoplastics, cancer drug, drugs, and I know that uh, cancer drugs are probably not your uh, most favorite uh, subject, so we're going to try to hopefully simplify it. Uh, I know when I was studying in pharmacy school and med school, uh, I hated chemo. Uh, but as far as uh, as far as studying anti-epileptics, I think uh, first don't get overwhelmed. Uh, second, I think if you know the drug name uh, and the mechanism of action, you've done a great favor for yourself. Um, that's where most of the question kind of uh, come in, just knowing the drug drug name and the mechanism. Uh, also, I know there are tons of side effects. If you just focus on like the specific and the weird side effects um, to each drug and try to link it to its mechanism of action. Um, as far as the indications, like uses for the drugs, um, I know Dr. Uh, Patashkin have kind of uh, given some indications, but honestly for USMLE, I don't think I've ever seen any questions um, that talks about uh, like regimens or anything like that. For there are some specific drugs that you have to know the indications, uh, but as far as regimens, I don't think that's uh, that's that's super high yield. So this is just a few tips to studying anti uh, neoplastics or anti uh, cancers. So before we go into depth of uh, studying uh, anti cancers. We, I'd kind of like to get a big picture of what exactly are we doing here. So cancer is really unprolifer uh, um, uncontrolled prol proliferation of cells. And the goal of anti-cancers is really to stop uh, the cell growth. Well, you're going to ask yourself, how do we stop uh, cell growth? And the, uh, there's a few things that we can do. Um, the first, uh, actually before that, um, as we all know, there is uh, cycles for the cell. There is the S phase where you make DNA. Uh, there is uh, the uh, uh, G2 phase where you re uh, repair. There's the M phase where the, there's mitosis. And then there's the G1 phase where... Actually, I, I apologize. You start with the G1 phase where you duplicate the cellular content. And then the S phase where you make DNA. And then the G2 phase, where you uh, double check uh, and repair the DNA that you've made. And then finally, the last step is mitosis, which, where you divide the cell. So for anti-neoplastics, uh, we can divide it into sort of different categories. The first category that we can do, or the first thing that we can do to stop the cell growth is to block nucleotide synthesis. So these are the building, uh, building blocks. Uh, if we can block nucleotide synthesis, we're not going to be able to make DNA and the cell is eventually going to die. And this happens specifically in the S phase. Well, you're going to ask yourself, how do we block nucleotide synthesis? And these by the anti-metabolites. So whether it's methotrexate, 6 mercaptopurine, or 5-fluorouracil, or the pyrimidine and uh, purine analogs. Um, and these uh, kind of go in the... Uh, uh, the the cell and mimic the, uh, the the building block and the DNA polymerase is not gonna work. So that's the first step. The second thing that we can do is we can block DNA replication itself. So even if you have the nucleotides, we can block its replication. So we can kind of uh, cross-link the DNA. So we can make the two strains of the DNA cross-link together. And this is achieved by the alkylating agents. And these are the examples, the nitrogens, the nitrous ureas, platinum, and busulfa. And these uh, make the DNA cross-link together. Uh, you, can inter, uh, you can have some drugs that interclate in the DNA, so kind of stick itself in the, in the DNA, um, and these are the antibiotics. Um, you, can make the, you can make breaks in the DNA, so you can have DNA strain breaks, and these are uh, bleomycin and anthracyclines. And finally, um, you can block DNA unwinding. So we know that for DNA, as we are replicating it, it forms these super co super coils that causes tension on the uh, on the DNA strands, and this tension is relieved by topoisomerase, the topoisomerase enzyme. Um, so if you have inhibitor to topoisomerase, you can block DNA unwinding and eventually uh, 
you know, there's going to be uh, DNA, DNA breaks. So that's the first, that's the second um, big categories of how to stop uh, cell growth, block DNA replication. Uh, the third thing that we can do is we can block the division. So let's say that you've made nucleotides. Let's say that you replicated DNA. Now you need to divide your cell to two. Um, we have drugs that can block the cellular divisions, and that works. These work specifically in the M phase, and these drugs are the vinca alkaloids, so vincristine and vinblastine, and the taxanes, the paclitaxel and docetaxel. Uh, so this is the third step that we can uh, we can stop the cell growth. The last two things uh, that, that we can do is, uh, uh, is we can block the signal. So we know that each cancer needs a signal to proliferate and survive. And we have ways, we've identified ways that we can block the, the ghost signal. So if the cancer is dependent on estrogen and androgens, we have drugs that can block these. If the uh, cancer is depending on a specific signal that we've identified, uh, we can either we can have monoclonal antibodies or tyrosine kinase uh, inhibitors, but really the goal is to block the signal. And there is other uh, mechanisms that we can do. But I think um, it, it's really important that you understand uh, the slide. If you understand the slide, it's going to make things a lot easier. So either block nucleotide synthesis, uh, block DNA replication, uh, block cellular division, or block uh, growth signals. So with that in mind, um, let's kind of go through that schematic. And I think it's really helpful. It's from first aid. Um, so, um, so there is the G1 phase. There is um, some drugs that kind of uh, are cell cycle independent. So these are the alkylating agents. They don't work in a specific cell cycle. Uh, the anti-metabolites work in the S phase. Uh, Topo isomerase inhibitor kind of work in, uh, in both, in S and, and G2 phase. Um, and uh, lastly, the microtubule inhibitors work in the um, in the M phase. So, with that understanding in mind, let's go to the first drugs that block uh, nucleotide synthesis. So, these are the anti-metabolites. So, just a basic review: you guys know that you know, nucleosides based on sugar, nucleotide based sugar and phosphate. So, drugs that block the base synthesis again they all work in this uh, synthesis phase the S phase and that kind of comes a uh, high yield for uh, for exams so you can have drugs that block uh, purines these are six mercaptu purine and six thioguanine so hence the name you can also have uh, other drugs mycophenolate and ribavirin um, there's drugs that block pyrimidines so leflonamide uh, methotrexate, but not directly, and uh, 5-fluorouracil, uh, cytarabine, and uh, hydroxyurea. So this is uh, also from first aid, kind of a schematic of um, how uh, pyrimidines uh, and, purine, and purines get, uh, get made. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I just wanted to show you where kind of different drugs uh, work in the cycle, whether it's leflonamide, uh, methotrexate and 6 mercaptopurine or mycophenolate and ribavirin and you can go back to this whenever you know you have a question. Um, so the first class of drugs are the purine analogs um, and the first one is 6 mercaptopurine. Uh, 6 mercaptopurine is an active form of azathioprine and uh, Mike actually discussed this in immunosuppressant so you can refer back to uh, his discussion. But the whole idea is 6 uh, mercaptopurine goes into the DNA, uh, says to the growing strand, hey, I want to come in and uh, hang out with you guys. Um, and it got, that gets attached to the DNA strand, but when the DNA polymerase uh, comes in, uh, it, can't, uh, it, can't add the, it can't add any more strands to it. So it stops DNA, uh, DNA polymerase. And that's the whole ideas of really any analog. Um, so 6 mercaptopurine. Mycophenolate uh, is already discussed in immunosuppressants. Ribavirin, I know it's in your drug list, but it's going to be discussed in the antivirals uh, sections in the future. Next, uh, next, agent, uh, next class of drugs is the folic acid antagonists. And we have a bunch of them, but the ones that we wanted to focus on this, this test is methotrexate. And methotrexate is such an important drug that you We'll see it in clinical practice, and you'll see so many questions on it. And 
uh, USMLE one and on um, and maybe you know on your on your exam. So how does it work? Uh, the whole idea is uh, cells need tetrahydrofolate to make uh, DNA. I'm gonna go back to this. So um, you have this last step right here. So in order for uh, uh, deoxyuridine monophosphate to become deoxythymidine monophosphate, it needs this cycle. So it needs tetrahydrofolate. Um, so methotrexate comes and blocks uh, this enzyme that uh, reduces dihydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate. Um, so here is the wording and inhibits dihydrofolate reductase, inhibits tetrahydrofolate synthesis, thus inhibiting thymidine synthesis. If you don't have thymidine synthesis, you're not going to make DNA. If you can't make DNA, the, your cell is not going to grow. Um, it's used for uh, two uh, broad categories, neoplastics and non-neoplastic use. So neoplastic use means it's used for cancer. So either leukemias and lymphomas, don't, and don't focus too much on what kind of leukemias and what kind of lymphomas. Uh, Non-neoplastic use, you'll see it in the future, in future exams. So rheumatoid, psoriasis, ectopic pregnancy. And really the goal for, for, for these, either neoplastic or non-neoplastic, is to halt cell growth. Uh, side effects is, is really important as well. Um, so the first uh, side effect is myelosuppression. And you'll hear this word tossed around a lot. Uh, myelosuppression. So what is myelosuppression? Myelo is myeloid, suppression is stop. So you're stopping the myeloid um, cell line from the bone marrow. So what comes from the myeloid cell line? It's either white blood cells, red blood cells, or uh, or platelets. So methotrexate causes a drop in, in all of these. Um, second thing is that it causes oral ulcers, which makes sense. If you're going to stop DNA synthesis, you're going to stop the fast-growing cells from uh, from dividing and the uh, oral, uh, oral, oral cells, and generally the gastric, uh, the, any GI cells are fast growing, so it causes oral ulcers. Uh, pulmonary fibrosis is another well-known side effect, and you'll get tested on this a lot. Um, so methotrexate causes pulmonary fibrosis that's manifested as a restrictive uh, lung disease. And lastly, it causes hepatotoxicity because it gets metabolized in the liver. Now, um, so it causes all of these horrible side effects, namely myelosuppression and ulcers and, and whatnot. And the reason is, is because cells don't have uh, tetrahydrofolate. Uh, so they developed this drug, which is called leucovorin, which is folinic acid. It's a, it's a form of tetrahydrofolate, but it actually bypasses dihydrofolate reductase. So you can give the cell you know, a steady stream of tetrahydrofolate that the cell doesn't have to make. Um, and the use of leucovorin is to reverse myelosuppression that's caused by methotrexate. So in chemo uh, regimens, you'll give like a high dose of methotrexate and follow it by, uh, by leucovorin. And it actually doesn't affect the efficacy of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the methotrexate because cancer cells, I don't think they use uh, leucovorin or folinic acid. So uh, that's as far as uh, folic acid. So we talked about purine analogs. We talked about folic acid antagonists. And the last, uh, last class of DNA synthesis inhibitors is pyrimidine analogs. So these are drugs that go in and kind of act, uh, become a little sneaky and act like uh, pyrimidines. Um, and the ones that I'm going to talk about or I'm going to focus about is 5-fluorouracil and cytarabine. 5-fluorouracil, it's a pyrimidine analog, uh, and it complexes and inhibits thymidylate synthase. So thymidylate synthase, I'm going to refer back to the picture here. So you have here DUMP, and uh, it's uh, metabolized by thymidylate, thymidylate synthesis into DTMP. Um, so that blocks thymidine synthesis. So if you, if you remember that 5-fluorouracil uh, inhibits thymidylate synthase, um, you've honestly gone half the battle. Um, it's used for solid growing tumors, uh, mainly colon cancer and pancreatic cancer. Um, and actually, it's uh, weirdly enough, its effects are enhanced by the addition of leucovorin. And you're going to ask me, well, why does leucovorin come in the picture here? And I'm going to tell you back that uh, leucovorin actually stabilizes the drug binding to thymidylate synthase. So it makes it bind stronger 
We don't know why exactly, but that's uh, the theory. So if it binds stronger, it's going to cause more inhibition. And side effects, myelosuppression, which makes sense. Um, Cytarabine is a pyrimidine analog. Uh, it incorporates in the DNA and inhibits the DNA polymerase because DNA polymerase can't add any more uh, nucleotides to it. It's used for AML, acute myelogenous leukemia, and side effects is myelosuppression. So again, you'll see the theme of myelosuppression as throughout the, uh, the cancer drugs. So uh, this ends our discussion with the DNA, DNA synthesis inhibitors. And next we'll talk about uh, the, um, uh, the drugs that uh, cause, uh, that stop DNA replication. All right, guys, we're back and uh, continuing our discussion with the anti -NA plastic. So with the first part, we talked about how to stop making the building blocks, uh, aka the uh, bases, uh, to make DNA. The, this part, we're going to talk about how to stop uh, DNA replication. And how to stop that is uh, uh, via drugs called alkylating agents. So the word alkylating really means that it gives an alkyl group to the DNA. So it gives an alkyl group, it makes the DNA kind of stick together, and DNA, DNA polymerase can't pass through it, so it stops DNA uh, replication. So the first uh, class of drug is the nitrogen mustards. Um, so these are mainly uh, the cyclophosphamide and the I-phosphamides. And how these work is that they cross-link uh, the DNA and uh, they inhibit DNA uh, replication. They're used for uh, solid tumors, non-Hodgkin lymphomas, but also know that it can be used for other autoimmune disease too, like lupus or rheumatoid uh, arthritis. Uh, the biggest, biggest thing that I want you guys to take out of cyclophosphamide and I-phosphamide is the uh, side effect. So it can cause myelosuppression, which is something that we all, all know that all chemo drugs can cause myelosuppression. But the biggest thing it caused this weird side effect, which I want you guys to know, uh, hemorrhagic cystitis. So uh, their bladder actually starts bleeding. And the reason for that is the compound, it's made, uh, it has a substance called acrolin. And acrolin goes to the bladder and causes the bladder to bleed, so uh, hemorrhagic cystitis. Um, how to prevent that side effect is by hydration, so you give the patient saline. Uh, but you also give uh, something called mesna. Uh, and mesna has a, a thiol group, and it binds acrolin, and it prevents hemorrhagic cystitis. So very, very high yields for examination purposes, whether it's block exam, or a step one exam to know that hemorrhagic cystitis is caused by acrolin um, and that's prevented by mesna. And this is a side effect of cyclophosphamide or iphosphamide. Uh, next, nitrogen mustard is melphalan. I don't really have much to say in melphalan because it's a low yield drug. Uh, I just have your used for multiple myeloma. If you have an extra brain cell, you can put it in there, but I don't think it's very high yield. Next uh, class of alkylating agents are the nitrosurea. So remember, we're still trying to prevent uh, DNA replication. So nitrosurea, mainly carmustine and lumustine. So these are the musts. Um, um, and the, how it works is that it cross-links the DNA. The biggest thing about the, the nitrosurea is that it crosses the blood-brain barrier. So it must cross the blood-brain barrier. Um, and the use is that it's used for brain tumors because you want to get the drug to the to the tumors in the brain. Um, and so it's used for brain tumors. So that's a high yield uh, point to know. Side effects, uh, it causes CNS toxicity, seizures, because it crosses the blood-brain barrier, and it also causes myelosuppression. So high yield point to know of the carmestine and lumestine is that it's used for brain tumors because it crosses the blood-brain barrier. Uh, next, alkylating agents are the platinum agents, um, and these are made really of platinum. So cisplatin, carboplatin, and oxaliplatin. And how it works uh, is that they cross-link the DNA, so they make the DNA stick together. Um, it's used uh, for testicular cancer and ovarian cancer and a bunch of other cancers, but these are the ones that I would probably know, testicular and ovarian uh, cancer. Um, 
And side effects is really all related to free radicals. So platinum is an agent, and once it goes into the body, it causes uh, free radicals. So it causes nephrotoxicity, so it goes into the kidney. It causes peripheral neuropathy, it, causes, it, go, it goes into the nerves, and it causes ototoxicity, so it goes into the ears. Um, and these are all caused by free radicals. So nephrotoxicity, it causes hypomagnesemia and hypokalemia, because the kidneys can't concentrate and can't reabsorb your potassium and, and magnesium. And how you prevent that um, is you prevent it by a drug called amifostine, and it's a free radical scavenger, so it goes and kind of collects these free radicals. You can also prevent it by hydration. I don't think that amifostine is in your uh, lecture. Actually, I'm not sure, uh, but it's definitely in, in first aid. Um, and the other side effect is peripheral neuropathy and autotoxicity. Um, just FYI, if she asks you which platinum is least toxic, carbo. Carboplatin is least toxic. So the one thing uh, that I would probably take out of the platinum agents is um, is the biggest thing is really nephrotoxicity. Uh, next uh, group of drugs of the alkylating agents are busulfan and the procarbazine and the carbazine. So I'm going to talk first about the, the, the busulfan. Again, like every other alkylating agent that cross-links DNA, um, it's used for CML, but that's something that's probably not super high yield. Uh, busulfan is important in two things. Uh, it causes severe myelosuppression. So with all the other drugs, they cause myelosuppression, but this is severe enough that it actually that it pretty much wipes out your bone marrow. Um, so it's actually been used for patients that are undergoing bone marrow transplant to wipe out their bone marrow to prevent a graft versus host uh, disease. So it's so bad that it you know causes severe myelosuppression. Uh, the second thing is that it actually goes into the lung and it causes pulmonary fibrosis. Um, and this is kind of like a strange side effect that I would probably be aware of. Do you guys remember what other drug causes uh, pulmonary fibrosis? Yes, methotrexate. So methotrexate causes pulmonary fibrosis as well. Uh, next uh, alkylating agents is procarbazine and uh, carbazine. Uh, we don't really know how they work, uh, possibly break the DNA strands. Uh, used for lymphomas. Um, side effects uh, for procarbazine and decarbazine is uh, kind of interesting. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about it. So there is two specific side effects. One, uh, that it can cause a disulfur M reaction. So I don't know if you, uh, if any of you guys have um, uh, the feeling of, uh, you know, being uh, really flushed after drinking alcohol. So it's the same same reaction. I'm pretty sure you guys have learned about it first year. Um, so procarbazine uh, causes disulfur M reaction. And the reason it causes it is because it inhibits alcohol, alcohol formaldehyde. So um, when alcohol uh, gets metabolized uh, by alcohol dehydrogenase, um, uh, it makes alcohol formaldehyde. And... Uh, Procarbazine actually inhibits, sorry, there is a mistake here. I forgot to add alcohol formaldehyde dehydrogenase. Uh, and it causes disulfur M reaction because the formaldehyde kind of uh, builds up um, and it causes uh, flushing and cutaneous cutaneous symptoms. So the thing with procarbazine is to avoid, uh, avoid alcohol use. So that's the first uh, side effect. The second side effect is that um, it causes a hypertensive crisis. And you're going to ask me, why does it cause hypertensive crisis? And I'll tell you. Um, so usually, um, uh, it causes hypertensive crisis specifically when it's, uh, eat, when it's used with foods containing tyramine. So these are aged cheese and, and wine. And the reason is uh, tyramine goes and kind of displaces norepinephrine from the synaptic cleft. It goes and tells norepinephrine, hey, kind of move out, I need to be there. When norepinephrine is displaced, it goes into the synaptic cleft. And we know that norepinephrine is a vasoconstrictor. Normally, that's, uh, uh, that's fine. But uh, procarbazine is a monamine oxidase inhibitor, which means that it inhibits the enzyme that breaks down norepinephrine. So if you do that, you're going to have too much 
unbroken norepinephrine and norepinephrine causes hypertension. So the biggest two things that I would know about procarbazine and decarbazine is that in uh, is that inhibits alcohol uh, formaldehyde dehydrogenase um, and inhibits monamine oxidase enzyme. So it causes disulfiram reaction and it causes hypertensive crisis, specifically with foods containing tyramine, um, such as aged cheese and wine. So if you're driving a car, I think that's the mnemonic that uh, Dr. Pateshkin kind of used. If you're driving a car, don't drink alcohol and uh, don't eat cheese and don't uh, drink wine. Um, so it's kind of sad. Uh, the next uh, class of agents is the natural antibiotics. So the natural antibiotics um, are antibiotics that are occurring from uh, bacteria and they've been found to have anti-neoplastic properties. So the first one is actinomycin D and actinomycin D goes and intercalates and kind of sticks itself into the DNA and then the DNA polymerase doesn't know what to do with it so it stops uh, synthesis. Uh, it's specifically used for uh, childhood tumors. So these are actually things that I would uh, that I would know. I know that I kind of told you to not focus on the indication too much, but actinomycin uh, is uh, curative for Wilms tumor. So Wilms tumor is a tumor of the adrenal medulla, and it's a primitive tumor. It's a nephroblastoma. It's also used for Ewing sarcoma, which is a primitive tumor of the bone, and it's also used for rhabdomyosarcoma, which is a tumor of the... Uh, muscular, uh, musculoskeletal cell, rhabdo, uh, muscle, um, rhabdo is skeletal, myo is muscle, sarcoma is cancer. Uh, side effect is myelosuppression. So for actinomycin D, I would know that it's used for a Wilms tumor and uh, for Ewing sarcoma. Uh, rhabdomyosarcoma is not that high, uh, high of a yield. Uh, the second class of, uh, the second drug in natural antibiotics is uh, bleomycin. So bleomycin, um, it induces free radical formation. It causes DNA breaks, uh, and it specifically inhibits DNA ligase. So you remember that DNA ligase is the enzyme that kind of come and sticks together the pieces of broken uh, DNA uh, during the G2 phase, and bleomycin inhibits that enzyme. So if you inhibit that enzyme, uh, there is going to be more DNA breaks, and eventually the cell is going to undergo apoptosis and die. Uh, it's used for testicular cancer, and again, side effect is pulmonary fibrosis. So I'm going to lump all of the medications that causes pulmonary fibrosis together. So do you guys remember these? Um, so bleomycin, methotrexate, and busulfan. And actually, I had a question on my step one exam, and it asked me, have a patient with a shortness of breath and dyspnea of exertion, and it gave me the uh, pulmonary function tests for it. Uh, so the, uh, and it showed a restrictive lung disease, uh, and it asked me which medication is the patient taking, and methotrexate was one of the, was one of the answers, so the answer was methotrexate. The point that I'm trying to make is pulmonary fibrosis is a high yield point, um, and uh, it's uh, caused by bleomycin, methotrexate, and busulfan. Uh, next class of alkylating agents is the uh, Rubicin uh, sisters. So doxorubicin, danorubicin, and ipirubicin. Uh, suffix is, uh, is rubicin. Uh, mechanism of action is that it generates free radicals causing the DNA breaks, um, DNA breaks. And how it generates free radicals is that these drugs have a lot of iron. So iron uh, is generally bound in the body. When it's not bound, uh, it causes uh, free radical formation, and free radical formation causes a lot of uh, terrible things. Um, it's mainly used for breast cancer, uh, lymphoma, and leukemia. Side effect is kind of uh, is kind of a funky one, so that's something that I would remember. So the Rubicin sisters actually cause uh, dilated cardiomyopathy. So it causes the uh, the uh, the blood the uh, the heart to dilate, and it's all related to iron deposits. So uh, iron goes in, it goes into the heart, and it kind of causes this dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, so before starting these medications, you need something called a MUGA scan. And a MUGA scan is a scan to uh, evaluate the heart function before starting the medication. How you prevent uh, the dilated cardiomyopathy myopathy is you use a drug called dex -re -re as you can know, I can't even pronounce it, it dex uh, okay, I'm going to stop trying. Uh, it's this drug.
I think if you can if you can recognize it, you'll be good. Um, and how it works is that it's an IR chelating agent. So it goes in and kind of scavenges and collects these free, uh, free iron molecules and it prevents cardiotoxicity. Um, if she asks you which medication is least cardiotoxic, is epirubicin. So epirubicin is the least cardiotoxic. Um, and it also causes severe allo alopecia because uh, the hair cells are fast growing and this medication kind of uh, blocks, uh, blocks fast growing cells so it causes severe uh, alopecia. So the one thing that I would probably take of the rubicin uh, sisters uh, is that it causes dilated cardiomyopathy and the reason for that is because um, of free iron radicals. Uh, next class of agents is the topoisomerase inhibitors. Um, so as we talked earlier is that when the DNA uh, is, when DNA polymerase is working, uh, it creates these super coils in the DNA and it needs, uh, and it causes, um, you know, tension on the, on the DNA strands. So you have these enzymes, the topoisomerase enzymes, that co come and cause a little bit nick of nicks uh, or breaks in the DNA to relieve the tension. So we were smart enough to know that and to develop uh, drugs that uh, inhibit topoisomerase. So there is two uh, topoisomerase inhibitors. There is the topo2 inhibitors and there is the topo1 inhibitors. So a topo side, we to, so two, is a topo2 inhibitor um, and inhibits DNA unwinding and replication. Uh, it's very, very important, and this is a high yield point, to know what's the difference between uh, or which drug inhibits TOPO2 and which drugs inhibit uh, TOPO1. So a TOPO site inhibits TOPO2. Uh, it's used for solid tumors, so testicular tumors and lung cancer, and side effects myelosuppression and uh, alopecia. Nothing uh, unusual. Uh, Irinotecan and TOPOTecan, uh, they inhibit topoisomerase 1, and they're used for colon cancer, ovarian, and, and lung. The one weird thing about irinotecan and topotecan is that it causes severe, severe diarrhea. Like patients will have diarrhea all the time. Uh, and the reason for diarrhea is because they suppress the gastrointestinal cells, which have high turnover rates. And on step, how it can uh, present is that they'll tell you a patient is coming severely hydrated, with low potassium, low magnesium, and kind of very low electrolytes, um, and they'll ask you, uh, and they'll tell you that patient is a cancer patient, and they'll tell you what medication is the patient uh, on, and it'll be one of these topo one inhibitors, either irinotecan and topotecan, because it it causes severe uh, severe diarrhea. So um, I know that was a lot for alkylating uh, agents. So to review. Uh, real quick, these are medications that block DNA replication. Um, so you have the nitrogen mustards, the nitrous ureas, platinum agents, uh, and then other stuff, uh, busulfan, brocarpazine, uh, natural antibiotics, anthracyclines, and lastly the topoisomerase uh, inhibitors.